Well, aren't you a regular Nancy Drew? I learned that from the Nancy Drew detective. Okay, go. You think you can follow the clues and solve the case of the missing condiment, Nancy Drew? Ah. Because I've read every Nancy Drew mystery ever written. Nancy, please tell me you're joking. Wow, you suck at this Nancy Drew stuff. You should get a new hobby. My name is Carson Drew, and this is my assistant, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy Drew. It's curtains for you, Miss Drew. Nancy. Nancy Drew strikes again. A regular Nancy Drew. regular Drews. Hi everyone. <laughs> well, welcome to episode 96. Uh, today we have another uh, Nancy Drew file for you. This one, number six, Whitewater Terror. <laughs> um, so what did you think, Corey? <laughs> I'd like to know, because of course our patrons vote on which ones we choose. Mm -hmm. Did y'all do this on purpose or the last <laughs> three books that we've covered have been like increasingly worse sporting accidents? <laughs> or... <laughs> Oh my god. Because this is like, this one is crazy, like awful, yeah. getting stranded in the wilderness, worst mm -hmm. vacation camping trip of all time. Yeah. It's like Donner Pass vibes. Like, I know. Picked off one by one. I mean, kind of, not really, but like, uh, almost. that's what it feels like. You yeah. know, like vibe wise, that's what this is. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's exciting though. Yeah. No, totally. And I do think. It's different enough from the previous one. You're, yeah. You know, that it's not, that it doesn't feel like I'm reading the exact same book. But, like, is it very similar? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it, and, and I'm talking about Murder on Ice. Is it very similar to Murder on Ice? Yes. Is it worse than Murder on Ice? Also, yes. <laughs> but did I enjoy it? Yes. Yeah, a lot. Would I read a million of these? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like the plot I feel like was not really like a mystery and it, it didn't feel no. more like a mystery felt more like a suspense action adventure kind of a novel which is fine you know mm -hmm. just not necessarily what I'm looking for in a Nancy Drew book but that's okay you know I I enjoyed it it was a very similar premise to Murder on Ice with all the sabotage yeah um sabotage after sabotage after sabotage but there was something, like, weirdly enjoyable about, like, getting to see them all be just, like, so miserable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know what that says about me. But, like, I love... They, like, they were, like, sleeping on the dirt. They didn't mm -hmm. have blankets. They were running out of food. And I was, like, <laughs> relishing every minute of it. I was like, yes, starve. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know why. What is wrong with me? Like, it was really fun to read. The, I read it almost the whole thing in one sitting. Like I read the first chapter one night and then I, the next night I sat down to read the next chapter and I just finished it right then. <laughs> and, yeah, I think this book has clearly marked me out as being like a sadist or something. Oh my gosh. But I know I just, I do think, okay, I do think there is actually something to that though in that I think in a lot of the other books that we've read, Nancy Drew books we've read, uh... Nancy's very privileged. She gets to pretty much do whatever she wants to do. Mm -hmm. Money is not an object for her. She lives a really cush life. And so I think there's something about this book that made me realize, like, yeah, we do we do want to see Nancy in more desperate situations. Yeah. And I think that I mean that's really that's a really important part of a of a mystery novel, honestly, is like bringing your detective down really, really low. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to bring them down in order for the triumph, for the mystery solving to have a big impact. Like, your your main character has to go through really extreme trials. Like, that's, just, that's just the nature of any plot, really. And so the fact that Nancy, the Nancy Drew books have managed to kind of avoid that for yeah. a lot of it, it just, I think it me makes the mystery less compelling you mm -hmm. know it makes it seem more cutesy and like la di da kind of a mystery which is not as exciting and yeah. i know that that's that's a 
you know, that that's also a big reason why people like Nancy Drew books too, is because it's it almost more verges on like a cozy mystery type of thing, mm-hmm. um, kind of, and less like you know suspenseful, less heavy action, um, no but, stress, <laughs> right? No stress. Yeah. You always know Nancy's going to figure it out. It's just a matter of how kind of a thing. Um, But this one, I was like, Nancy could get really injured. And Mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited about that. Like, that makes me really excited. So, yeah. So more of that, please. You know? Right. Yeah. I want to see. And this is, of course, I think a (laughs) part of just like our age group, right? Is I want to see Veronica Mars Nancy. I don't want to see like, gosh, what's another example? Of a, like, cute, like... Harriet the Spy. Yeah, I don't want to see a Harriet the Spy Nancy. (laughs) Yeah. Veronica Mars Nancy. With guns and, you know, like, big stakes and dangerous situations. Right. Yeah. And this delivers, you know? Mm -hmm. So. (laughs) No spoilers. And we'll say why later, but this book is what Ransom of the Seven Ships wishes it could have been. Oh. You know? Which is like the level of danger yeah. and then the plot twist at the end and yeah. So I mean, was it a plot twist? But No, I mean it was supposed to be. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, it just we'll yeah, we'll we'll get yeah, more we'll into talk that later. About it, of yeah. course. Because it course does share a little bit of similarities. But yeah. yeah. This book reminded me a lot of And Then There Were None. Okay. Like, have yeah. you ever read that? Or I don't s- think seen so. any of the movies, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a long time ago I saw the movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but if you've ever read Agatha Christie, I'm kind of an Agatha Christie fan. And um, and then There Were None is obviously probably one of her most famous, if mm-hmm. not the most famous of all of her works. And this gave me the, those vibes. Yeah. Um, kind of with the plot twist um, is very similar to And Then There Were None. Mm-hmm. Plot twist at the end and... Um, all of the, yeah, this is like the feeling of like being like alone in the wilderness and mm-hmm. not knowing who is out to get you. Yeah. Um, and like feeling like, well, it's gotta be one of us. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, that's, that's, that's definitely the vibes of this book. Now is this, and then there were none. No, no, uh, no, no, never could be. <laughs> um, and if you haven't read and then there were none, go stop what you're doing. Stop listening to this podcast right now and go read. And then there were none because it is that good. Um, but if you have read and then there were none and you, you would like to read a Nancy Drew-esque and then there were none book, this is the book for you. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay. Cover art? Yes. Let's talk about the cover art. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so 80s. So mm-hmm. this book was published in 1986. So this is like Nancy's hair. Look at her hairline, first of all. Is oh like hat. Like she doesn't even have a forehead. Because it's just it's, bangs. <laughs> it doesn't even look like bangs, though. It's like a mullet, almost. Yeah, it's just like this a really yes, <laughs> whole like nineteen eighties feathered yeah. cloth that looks mm-hmm. like a helmet type of situation is what's going on with Nancy. And the shorts are not flattering. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not cute. Why are we wearing this in Montana? We're in yeah. Montana. Why are we wearing Wait, short shorts and a I short sleeve shirt? We're in Montana? We're in Montana. <laughs> and I know Ooh, it's like, yeah. did they say when this takes place? Um, I feel like it's the summer. It has to be because how yeah. else would they be in the water? Mm-hmm. I, I had that question too. Let's They're see. like almost freezing to death in the nights, but we're wearing shorts. Right, right. Okay. Well, yeah, no, I assume it's because it's like desert. And so it's like, yeah, it's really, it's hot during the day, but it gets cool, um, mm-hmm. really cold at night, um, which I guess makes sense for Montana. Now that I realize it was Montana. I, <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. I guess they say it like once. Um, so maybe yeah, that's at the why, very but, beginning. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, I had to go back and check actually while I was reading. I was like, where are they? But yeah, yes, it is summer. It is summer. Um, okay. Because Ned, um, Nancy makes a remark that Ned is at summer school. Gotcha. Um, okay. At college, so he's like taking summer classes. Um, well, then I can. I guess I could buy the shorts anyway. Right. But um, still not the greatest <laughs> look, though. <laughs> yeah, it's odd. It's an odd look for sure. I think, I guess the, so it, the the cover features Nancy in the foreground in that awful outfit like you were talking about. 
out. And then kind of, I guess, probably a few feet behind her is a man who I think is supposed to be the character of Max. I'm pretty sure because he's got the scar. Yeah, he's got mm-hmm. the scar. The only thing that tripped me up is that he's got that, like, knife holster on his belt. And so I wondered for a second, like, is that supposed oh, to be Todd, maybe? Right. Because that's a whole thing we'll talk about later, too. But it's got to be Luke. I mean, it's got to be Max. Mm-hmm. See, I almost said Luke. Like, yeah. you're reading Murder on Ice. <laughs> no, Max. Because can you believe there is another hot male figure that one of the Drew crew is interested in who gets accused of doing all the bad stuff in it? Go and figure. That's, that's that's this person. <laughs> Just like Murder on Ice. But anyway, Only yeah. book six. <laughs> He's got a... I see, I like his outfit because it's the full denim suit kind of thing. He's wearing... If it's not a denim shirt, it's like a blue, like a pale blue kind of button-up shirt and then jeans. So that's like iconic, right? You can't, can't go wrong with that. But then the thing I have an issue with here, Corey... Is that the scene, so they they typically do this. They do the covers in kind of like a triangle threes formation, Mm -hmm. right? So we usually get Nancy, we get another character, and then we get some kind of scene that's happening in the background. That's pretty typical for all the file covers. The scene that they've chosen for the back one in here is also of Nancy Mm -hmm. going over the falls. There's a scene in the book where she goes over the falls alone in a boat. It's dramatic. Pretty early on. Pretty early on. Um, Same outfit, though. In the same outfit. Yeah. And so I'm like, wait a second. (laughs) I don't like, don't put Nancy on the cover twice. I feel like that's not okay. Like, pick a different scene. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's confusing. It makes my mind melt. So, like, wait a second. This is not Nancy looking over her shoulder at the scene. This is Nancy in two different times on the same cup. Like, I just don't, I don't know. I I don't jive with that. And maybe that's me being a little bit too picky. Um, But if that were me, I'd pick something else. I'd pick someone else's accident. Like Bess. But like Bess when she goes over the edge. Exactly. Yeah, that would have been easy. Or just like like everybody in the Mm -hmm. boat, you know, or... I don't know. Anything else. It could have been anything else. There were so many accidents that happened in, in the book. But, but overall, I think I really like the colors on this cover. Yeah. I think the, you know, kind of orangey reds with the blues is really dynamic. And it's um, interesting to look at for sure. Very summery. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Three words. Um, dirty, sweaty, gross. Yes. <laughs> Because I can only imagine how disgusting they all felt, having to get in and out of the water, being mm-hmm. super wet, not being able to shower, having to sleep on the ground for days, mm-hmm. like sweating <laughs> and during the day and then being freezing cold and shivering at night mm-hmm. with the dried sweat and dirt caked all over your body. Mm. Disgusting. <laughs> I didn't realize it was supposed to be a camping trip until the first night. Mm -hmm. And then they lose all their supplies and then it's like really an awful camping trip. So to not even have like your tent and everything that you need to have and still have to go on this camping trip. Horrible. They literally don't even have sleeping bags. Like they lost like half of their sleeping bags. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets a sleeping bag. So like they're literally laying on the dirt Mm -hmm. with a blanket. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I would sleep on the blanket. I think I'd rather be cold than just than directly being on, the, on dirt. the dirt. I don't know. <laughs> just roll yourself in the blanket oh, like a burrito. <laughs> now I'm thinking about all the bugs that would crawl over you and get mm. in your ears and your oh, nose. No. <laughs> oh. 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 I hate camping. Yeah. I couldn't even do it for one night Mm-mm. if I had all the Mm-mm. stuff. So Mm-mm. forget this. Sleeping. <laughs> No blanket directly like, in the dirt. Why would you? Why would you? This is the thing. I don't understand. I get loving nature, wanting to be out in nature, wanting to go hiking, wanting to go swimming, wanting to do all those things. Even, I don't know, cooking over an open fire. Sure, I can get how that's cool sometimes. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the night, when you're done and you want to go to bed, you want to sleep outside. There are houses cabins hotels Mm -hmm. so many places where you can sleep inside i just don't understand i don't understand on a bed get it Mm -hmm. i don't get it like i could i could maybe understand sleeping on a porch like if you wanted to like experience the night air or something but like no there needs to be (laughs) like like a foundation underneath me otherwise no your girl's not doing it not doing it no shade to everybody who likes camping. I just think it's wild, you guys. Doesn't seem pleasant <laughs> no. at all. No. 
I mean, yeah, let's make a s'more, but then I'm going yeah. inside afterwards. Yes. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm going to go wash my face, like, and go to bed. Yes, like, I need a shower. <laughs> I'm not shower. rolling around in the dirt, sweaty. No. no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Dirty, like, lake water on your river oh, water, I guess, my in this case. God. Mm. Yuck. Yuck. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Dirty, sweaty, gross can be one word. I think mm-hmm. we can have other ones, or we could just pick one of those three words, probably dirty. Um, <laughs> um, and then I feel like this book is really violent. It is really violent. Really um, violent. And I feel like all, we may need to put a content warning on some of this stuff because, I mean, it's not, I don't know that it's too bad, but if you're really sensitive, like there's some pretty scary bits with the knife, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and. There's a snake bit. Um, oh, right. And um, yeah, just like an actual physical violence, like physical fighting happens mm-hmm. a lot in this book, like multiple times. Um, yeah. Three times? I think so. So yeah, just be aware of that as you're listening. Mm-hmm. So dirty violence. <laughs> and then um, all of this could have been avoided had we just listened to Bess in the first place. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Best superiority. That's yes. what it will be. Best superiority. Is this more evidence of Best being psychic? Because the number of times she's like, guys, what if it was actually a trap? Mm-hmm. What if this is all a trick to get mm-hmm. us alone in the wilderness? Guys, what if we just went to the beach instead? Guys, what if we <laughs> don't go on this trip? Guys, I think there's danger afoot. Um, guys, no, maybe Bess, we should so turn wrong. around right now. Like maybe this is a sign and we should just go straight back to the airport. Like, There's no shame in just the giving up and going home. We yeah. could still go mm-hmm. home at this point and nobody would lose anything. Mm-hmm. Nope. Yeah. yeah. The number of times that happens. At so many points, <laughs> Beth is like, we could just take the loss and just go home and we would all be safe. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, Beth, it's all coincidences up to now. No, We're not going to have any more trouble. No. <laughs> yeah. So this book, this book is dirty, violent, and hashtag team Beth. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I will say they go, they are really rough on Bess in this book too. They are. There is yeah. a lot of Bess shame in this book and it makes me really upset. And Especially so we'll when we get to the compass part. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. I have such a, a, such an issue with that part and we'll mm-hmm. have to, we'll have to talk about it um, later because it makes no sense. Oh. Okay. And yes. screw you, George. You particularly because yes. that's your cousin <laughs> and we need to talk about that too. Okay. <laughs> she apologizes, but then continues to act terrible towards Bess. Well, yeah, in that situation. Yeah. We'll, have we'll, to, we'll have to talk we about will. that. We'll have to dissect that in detail. Because, Big time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Bess. Shall okay. we start? Let's do it. Okay. So we start off and Nancy, Bess, and George are all hanging out in Nancy's bedroom. And George is trying to convince them all to come along with her on this whitewater rafting expedition that she's like won in some contest or something. Bess, like we were saying, is very reluctant to go. She would much rather like go hang out on the beach. She thinks whitewater rafting is going to be way too much work. She also thinks it's sus that George does not know how she won this contest. Like she doesn't remember ever entering this contest, Mm. which is interesting. We'll we'll come back to that, obviously, of course. So so Bess does not want to go. But then George mentions something about, well, there's going to be lots of other cute young boys on this trip, right? Because it's a nature camping thing. So there's going to be lots of buff boys around Bess. You sure you don't want to go? And then Bess agrees. Okay. Okay. Nancy, though, I will have to say too, only agrees to go on this trip as well after George agrees to invite Ned. So it's not like Nancy is any better in this situation. She wants her boyfriend there too. Uh huh. It's not even like George. <laughs> it's not even George's idea to invite Ned. Nancy oh. just decides that Ned yes. should come. <laughs> And it's like, oh, well, George, four, you got four tickets, and I see one, two, three of us. That means we have one extra ticket. And who else would we invite besides Ned? And George, like you like, have a boyfriend or another friend. Exactly. And she does where at this point, you? I'm pretty sure. Like, where is Bert? And George is like, well, I don't know. And Nancy's like, well, I mean, Ned's been white rider rafting before. So, like, why wouldn't we invite him? Like, what if we get in trouble? Like, we're going to need Ned if we uh. capsize or whatever. Like, and she just kind of works her way into inviting Ned into the trip. But but again, we we are supposed to feel a certain way about Bess, you know, mm-hmm. only wanting to come because boys 
are going to be there, but we're not supposed to feel a certain way about Nancy only wanting to go if Ned's there. Like, oh my gosh. what is this double standard? Anyway, but no, really the real reason why Nancy wants Ned to come is because I guess in the first few files, this is file number six at this point, but in the the ones previous to this, apparently there has been a little bit of Ned drama. She's felt like Ned's attention was kind of like waning away from their relationship. So (laughs) that was Smile and Say Murder was the one right before this, which we've covered. Was it? Where he is, is right like before? cheating on her the whole time, oh, I believe. Yes, yeah, you're right. It's That's totally the right. one in the. No, Hit and Run Holiday ma- is before, but but four. Oh, is it? So it's like the one right before. Oh, okay. Number four is Smile and Say Murder. And oh, because they mentioned we that. Covered Hit and Run Holiday. Yeah, um, I don't think we have. Okay, no. never mind. I got them mixed up, <clears> but yeah. But that I'm was sure very there was some still. stuff in there too. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> But yeah, no, she, I think she specifically mentions like the character that he was like all cozying up with Mm -hmm. or something in Smile and Say Murder. So she specifically talks about that and how like she just feels like their relationship isn't as good as it should be. And so she wants to use this as an opportunity to like reconnect with each other. Great. Okay, Nancy, we'll see how that goes. So later that evening, Ned is invited over to her house and they're making out and talking about this. (laughs) And uh, um, she invites him on the trip and he accepts, but he doesn't really seem super excited about it. And so she kind of uses that as like a jumping off point to talk about, hey, we've been kind of like distant lately. Like, you know, I want to try to repair our relationship or whatever. But really the whole conversation turns into like, well, yeah, Nancy, you haven't been paying attention to me. So that's why I cheated on you kind of a thing. Mm. (laughs) Which is just like, "Mm, um, no, but um, that's what Ned says. And then instead of like continuing the conversation and like, you know, talking about that, they just decide to make out some more. So, of course. Cool. Good job, guys. Great, great talk. (laughs) Great relationship work. Yes. Um, but then the phone rings, which interrupts their makeout session, and Nancy gets up and answers it. And on the phone, she hears this low, muffled voice um, that says, The trip your friend won is no prize. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay home and stay alive. Um, mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> very interesting. So the next morning, Nancy discusses this with Bess and George about this call. It's really weird because Nancy doesn't know whether it was supposed to be a threat or a warning. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, was someone threatening her about going on this trip or someone trying to warn her off going on this trip? Also, it's weird that Nancy got this call, even though George is the one who won the prize. Like, Mm -hmm. wouldn't they be calling George to warn George off the trip or threaten George off the trip? Like, how do they even know Nancy's coming? Really weird. Mm -hmm. So they're, like, concerned about this. They're talking about all this. They're talking about how, like, George can't even remember how she entered this competition. And Bess, again, is like, hey, maybe we should just not go. (laughs) Um, But George really doesn't want to pass up the free trip. Um, And, of course, Bess and Nancy don't want to just, like, leave George by herself on what could potentially be a dangerous trip. So they all agree to go. (sighs) So off they go, they start, and their trip is already starting off really rocky. Um, They have a horrible flight, and they were not met at the airport in Montana when they landed, as the letter that George had gotten about the competition promised that they would be. Instead, they get a note and, like, this vague map, and it tells, the note tells them to get a rental car and drive to the river where they're going to be, like, departing on their trip. But then there's, like, an issue with the rental car. It's, like, really late. takes forever to get the rental car. Um, And so it's so late that they just decide, okay, well, we should stay at um, a hotel near the airport and then just, like, start off really early the next morning to get to the place in time. So that's what they do. And they also don't sleep well at the motel because the planes are flying overhead and everything. It's just off. Like, it's off. Yeah. (laughs) To start. Um, And then they're, like, they have to get up really early and, like, rush to the river because they, like, have to leave at, like, 8 a.m. or something. So they're, like, up at, like, 5. Anyway. This Um, already is a terrible (laughs) vacation. Like, (laughs) just not sleeping well after a bad flight. Uh I'm like, oh, how could it get any worse? (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Seriously. Um, But so they're driving along really early in the morning. They're a little lost because of this horrible map that that someone hand drew. It's, like, not labeled at all or anything. But Bess is navigating well. Bess has the map, and she's navigating well. They specifically say this at the beginning. She's doing a great job. 
But anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and suddenly they realize that the road in front of them has like disappeared. Ned barely manages to skid the car to a stop in time so they don't go over the edge of this cliff that is suddenly in front of them. Though Bess bangs her head on the window. Bess was right. Hashtag team Bess. Um, mm-hmm. But otherwise they're fine. But it looks like the road in front of them had been destroyed by a rock slide. But like not recently. Like it looks like the rocks have been there for weeks. There's even like weeds growing in them. So that's really weird. Why isn't there like a barricade or like a sign or something that's that road closed? You know, if this has been here for weeks, surely somebody else knows about this. Um, But then they look around and they find that a barricade was there. It just seems to have been moved off the road and like hidden under like a brush pile which is Hmm. really weird. It like looks like someone deliberately moved it off the road and hit it. Um, And they specifically remark upon how lucky it is that they didn't drive here at night the way that they had planned to, if they had gotten the rental car a little bit earlier, Um, because if they had driven up to this like cliff in the dark, they wouldn't have seen it at all and would have gone right over the edge and died. Mm -hmm. So lovely. hmm. Is that what someone perhaps intended to happen? Probably. We'll find out more. (laughs) Um, Well, they start thinking about it and Bess is like, clearly this is a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, Bess, don't be so paranoid. There's a million reasons why this thing could have been moved. Oh my God. Listen to Bess, turn around and go back to the airport right now. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. They do think about turning back, but then George like, but we'll never figure out what's going on if we don't go on the trip. So they go. They have to like turn around to find a different way, but they finally make it to the river and they meet Paula, who is the owner, I guess, of like this whitewater rafting company or something. And she's the one who arranged this contest. But she's like a little cold towards them and like annoyed that they're kind of late, and, like they're not as on time as she wanted them to be or something. But Nancy also remarks after meeting Paula that there is something really familiar about her eyes. But she's sure she hasn't met her before, and Paula also says that they've never met before, so that's weird. Mm. Then they meet Max, who will be piloting one of the rafts, and he is immediately attracted to Bess, and Bess to him, so make a note on that. (laughs) And then they meet, like, everybody else. A girl introduces herself who's named Samantha or Sammy, and she starts flirting with Ned, like, Right off the bat, she is super into Ned. And right in front of Nancy, too, she's totally flirting with him. And Nancy also doesn't, like, seem to notice or care about this at all at the start. Um, She starts to hear a little bit later when it gets a little bit more heavy-handed. But uh, we'll talk about that, too. (laughs) Then they're about to go down to the river to meet all the other people on the trip when suddenly these loud cracks, like, gunshots, like, start going off. Hmm. Mm. (laughs) so it turns out that it's just other competition winners over somewhere else having fun um they've got a trash can and they're setting off fireworks inside the (laughs) trash can or i guess under the trash can or something and they (laughs) are very very pleased with themselves yeah they think it's just so hilarious that they have startled nancy bess and george yeah so yeah, so we meet everybody else here, including the fireworks guys. Um, their names are Todd and Mike. And then we also meet a woman named Mercedes, who we are going to learn is Paula's cousin. Um, and then also, I think actually they're a couple, right? Linda and Ralph, or Linda they sort of become a couple. A couple. Yeah. Um, and then of course, Samantha or Sammy, as she likes to be called. Uh, they all start chatting and Nancy asks them all, like, hey, how did you guys win the contest? And it seems like none of them can remember entering either, <laughs> which is very strange. <laughs> and then Mercedes, Paula's cousin, kind of pipes up and she's like, who cares? It's a free trip. Like, why ask questions, basically? This is so great that we're here. So at this point, Paula announces that the rafts are ready to go. They start loading in, or they start loading themselves into the rafts, and Paula directs Nancy to get into one of the boats. I guess they have two different rafts, and Mm -hmm. Paula is going to be like the leader of one raft, and then Max is going to be on the other raft. And so Paula's like, okay, Nancy, you're going to get into that one. And so as Nancy starts like stepping into the boat, it becomes unmoored (laughs) from the shore and just takes off with Nancy down the river. Um, towards this like really steep waterfall 
Uh, and of course, Nancy is able to navigate it herself. She <laughs> notices that there's like this like kind of offshoot where if she mm-hmm. like goes to the left on the river, it's not going to take her down the rocks. So she's able to like <laughs> navigate the boat and steer it, even <laughs> though she has like no nothing to do this right. with or whatever. But they get her back onto shore and they get her safe. And they take a look at the rope that they'd moored the boat to shore with. And Nancy had thought like, oh, somebody had cut it or like got frayed or something. Right. But she looks at it and this is not the case. The stake itself came out of the ground entirely. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to tell if like, okay, was the stake yeah. just not in the ground all the way? Or did somebody intentionally just pull it out right. so that I float away? Right. Uh, But Nancy's fine, so Paula tells everybody that they need to buddy up, and you're responsible for your buddy and their safety for the rest of the trip, so everybody get into the boats. Somehow Sammy ended up getting assigned to be Ned's buddy, or rather she, like, assigned herself, because (laughs) she's, like, kind of all over Ned already, and Nancy is not super happy about this, because they end up sitting together, and Nancy's kind of over here by herself. I think she's with George. Oh, yeah. Okay. So she pairs up with George. But still, she's kind of mad that she's not sitting with Ned. It's Mm -hmm. a little bit annoying. But anyway, they have like a nice morning. They're just kind of floating downstream after the drama of Nancy almost getting washed away. But it seems like it's fine now. I will say, I just want to bring up this. This is not really central to the plot at all. And maybe we should talk about this after. I don't know. But like, there is a scene when they're floating down this river where one of the characters, Todd, is talking about like skinning someone's pet raccoon. I don't even really remember why. It's just like totally random aside. But then he like takes out his knife. I think it's honestly to illustrate to everyone, oh, this guy Todd has a knife. Mm -hmm. Um, He takes out his knife and he ends up like putting it against Nancy's wrist Mm -hmm. to like, I guess, freak her out about how sharp it is or something. What the heck? Mm -hmm. Who? What? Um, Yeah, this guy's crazy. Yeah. Totally insane. Absolutely insane. So we should talk about that later, <laughs> too. Um, but yeah, but that happens while they're floating yeah. down the river, too. But It's a little disturbing. Yeah, because yeah. he's like, it's just so easy because my, nar- my knife is, like, so sharp. I could just, mm-hmm. like, easily skin a person right now and then holds it up to Nancy's wrist. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. Um, but Stop. I guess yeah, <laughs> somebody said something to him. I don't remember who it was specifically, but they tell him to knock it off. So he does eventually. I think it's Nancy. It might be Nancy. Yeah, let's see. He bet I could kill a bear with this knife. He boasted, touching the sharp honed blade to the blue veins of Nancy's wrist. Nancy jerked her arm away, staring at Todd. Um, She'd have to keep a watch on him. No, that's it. But there's another incident with the knife later where where Ralph disarms him. Well, it's not (laughs) like nobody's impressed by this, but he doesn't seem to like learn his lesson. He thinks it's hilarious or something. Because, yeah, he's going to do it again. Yeah, he's played off as being, like, this prankster. Like, oh, it's just a prank, bro. But it's like, I'm sorry, putting a knife to someone's skin, it's not a prank. Also, yeah, Todd has a super sharp knife. File that one away. For yes. Later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, at this time, Paula announces that it is time for lunch. So they're going to pull the boats over and get out and make some lunch. And while Paula and Max go to, like, make sandwiches, they tell them, like, oh, over there is a berry patch. You guys have to try the berries because they are so good and so fresh. Feel free to just go over and pick some, right? And as they're doing so, a bear just, like, comes out of nowhere because this is his berry patch, right? And basically, like, almost attacks them. And Ned, like, tries to, like, get up and run over to Nancy (laughs) and Bess. But, like, Sammy freaks out. And runs after him and, like, basically tackles him so that he falls over, like, into the the bushes or whatever. Um, And it's at this point that Max actually comes over and is able to shoo the bear away. And it's fine, but Ned is super embarrassed that he wasn't the one to be able to protect Nancy or whatever because of Sammy. Um, So Nancy, like, comforts him. She, like, makes a joke about Mm -hmm. how he was... You know, not not enjoying the attention mm-hmm. that he was getting from Sammy, but tells right. him that basically it's okay because they're fine now or whatever. And mm-hmm. Sammy is kind of miffed at this and she storms off. Yeah. But 
Anyway, Beth is, you know, just ooing and aahing over, oh, you saved us, swoon, Max, you're so heroic, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, and Nancy's like, hey, um, you know, Beth, how many times do we have to have this talk? Maybe <laughs> don't fall for suspects. Um, and Beth is like, no, why would he be a suspect? He's so handsome. He would never do anything wrong. He just saved us from that bear. <laughs> if he wanted anything bad to happen to us, all he had to do was just not save us. So therefore, <laughs> he could never be the bad guy. And Nancy's like, well, just, uh, you know, don't let yourself fall too hard before we know exactly what's going on here. Whatever. But just as they're discussing this, Nancy notices that over by the boats... Mercedes is kind of like acting weird. She's in the mm. boat. She's kind of like looking around for something. And Nancy realizes that she's in Nancy's bag. She's like <laughs> rummaging through Nancy's stuff. Yeah. So Nancy confronts her and she ends up like playing it off as though like she was looking for Paula's bag. So Paula's her cousin, right? So she's just looking for something in Paula's bag. But like Nancy's <laughs> bag literally has her name on it. So it's like, I don't think. I don't think that's true. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sadie's. But Nancy just lets it go because at this point she doesn't really want to like push anybody too hard while she's still trying to like figure out what really is going on here. Um, but then at lunch, Nancy is like talking about all of this with her friends. Um, but then Max comes over. So Nancy starts asking him about like the rafting business and specifically if he's worked for Paula for very long. He says no, that Paula actually just hired him for this trip. Like he didn't even know that it was like a contest and that all of these people were contest winners until like he got here. So interesting. Can we also talk about the name of the rafting company? What? Yeah. It's just called Whitewater <laughs> Rafting Inc. Yeah. What? Yeah. There's no way you got a trademark for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that right there, the genericness of the name, red flag number red one. Flag. <laughs> red flag. Red flag. Yeah, for sure. But Max does say that he thinks he recognizes Nancy. And so she ends up like explaining to him and to everybody, because now everybody's listening, that she is a detective. And so she's been in the newspaper a couple times. And so probably that's why he recognizes her. So cat's out of the bag <laughs> on that one. And then Nancy starts, like, listing the type of cases she worked on because somebody, I think, like, Linda or something asks. And Max gets, like, this weird look in his eye and kind of leaves. Hmm. So Nancy wonders if, like, there's something going on with him, if maybe there's something that he wants to tell her but can't because everybody's around or something. So she piles that one away. Then they all get back on the rafts um, and everybody switches positions. Everybody ends up being somebody else's buddy. And now Nancy and Ned are sitting together all is well with Yay. the couple <laughs> and then they approach this set of falls that they're going to be um trying to get over and nancy realizes that bess who is on the other raft isn't wearing her life jacket and they end up making like these really gross jokes about like how bess is more concerned about fashion than her safety because i'm sure it couldn't be anything else and, or like how forgetful she is or something. It's really targeted and, and annoying. I'm sorry. Do you see Nancy wearing a life jacket mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. image on the cover there where mm -hmm. she's the one falling out of the boat? No. Nope. No. Nope. She didn't put one on either first time. Nope. Um, again, double standard. Mm-hmm. But so the ra it's the raft that Max is captaining because, of course, Bess is glued to his side. Um, and it ends up like hitting the falls wrong. And so the raft, like, tumbles down over the falls and capsizes. The raft Nancy is in makes it down the falls safely and gets to shore, but, and everyone else who was on Max's boat seemed to have been wearing life jackets and was able to, like, make it to shore on their own, but Bess, who is not a strong swimmer, um, has to be rescued by George and Ned, and she ends up coughing up a bunch of water but says she's okay, which, if you've swallowed water, you need to go to the hospital. Yeah. So <laughs> dry drowning is a real risk, you guys. And Todd is like very annoyed about this whole like situation. And he ends up blaming Max for this. He says that this is the exact same thing that happened last year when two boys drowned in the same spot. Apparently, Max last year was piloting a raft down these exact falls and their boat capsized then too. So this is the second time Max has like unsuccessfully navigated this waterfall specifically 
And Todd says that everyone in this area knew about Max's, like, rafting accident. And everyone, all of the whitewater rafting companies, should have known not to hire Max. And so Paula should have known, too. Mm. Mm. So Nancy's like, oh, could this have been what the anonymous caller was warning me about? Maybe they were trying to say that, like, oh, Max is not a safe person to be on the river with. Potentially. So... Paula and Max, like, went out to, like, try to recover the capsized raft, but unfortunately, it it has been torn to shreds. It is, like, beyond repair. Also, a lot of the supplies that were on that raft got washed away downriver. So, this is bad news, because there is no other way out of this canyon except by river. They cannot hike out, so now the group has to, like, make a choice on either like try to fit everyone into the one raft that they have left which is like dangerous and not recommended because of the weight like it would be too heavy or leave half of the group behind and send someone back for them once the other group is able to make it out of the canyon and then after some deliberation of this they decide okay well that's what we'll do we'll split up we'll send half out of the canyon tomorrow morning and then the rest of us will wait here um but then todd starts being weird again he ends up like threatening linda with a knife i don't really have an explanation for why um he's just really aggro for some reason and ralph ends up disarming him and getting the knife away from him and nancy describes ralph as being like superman (laughs) i thought was really funny um and then they all go to bed um and nancy ends up waking up in the middle of the night Uh, having heard like a ripping sound. And so she gets up to like go investigate and she sees a figure, but it bumps into her and then just like disappears. So, hmm, interesting. So Nancy tries to follow them, but they end up just getting away. And she says that there's nothing she can do but go back to sleep. I'm sorry. Did we not have a thought that maybe we should check on all the other sleepers to see who is like there and who is not there? No. I'm like, you could have had case solved right now. Right now. Anyway. This process of elimination, that's too clever. <laughs> so Nancy goes back to bed, and the next morning, she gets up and looks around and finds that their last remaining raft has been slashed. So now they can't use that either. <laughs> so this is a real problem. Everyone wakes up, and they start fighting about this, right? Um, Linda blames Todd because he has the knife. He also, like, weirdly has a bandage on his hand, and his explanation for this is that after everyone went to bed, he and Mike, like, stayed up playing, like, a knife-throwing game or something, and he ended up getting injured while they were doing that. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) You're stranded in the wilderness with no, like... (laughs) access to call for help right no i mean we'll learn later that they have a small first aid kit but you're gonna do a risky (laughs) thing like this somebody could have died you throw that knife wrong and you need a hospital this also means that like it's not like they were just throwing the knife at a tree or something like no they must have been throwing the knife at each other right like this is like how else are you a, you get stabbed in the hand how right. else if you tried to not- catch a flying knife <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot oh my gosh um anyway so yeah so maybe todd did it but mike ends up vouching for him but they're friends so maybe he's just covering for him whatever we don't know But then Todd and Mike end up blaming Max because they're like, oh, you're upset, like you're, you're dangerous and you know, you're the reason why the first one, first raft went over the edge. So you must have done the other one too or something, whatever. Best sticks up for him. They're all fighting. Everybody's blaming each other. It's a mess. Sounds more likely y'all were having a knife game and (laughs) accidentally hit the boat with it and are trying to cover for yourselves. That's what it sounds like. No, the thing is, is that if it was just a one, like, single puncture, I think they Mm -hmm. could have repaired it. Yeah. Um, But with, like, duct tape or a patch kit or something, but it is, like, slash beyond repair, too. So it's definitely purposeful. Yeah. Um, It definitely is. It just, like, their explanation just sounds so (laughs) far-fetched. Like, no, it's Max's fault because we were mad at him yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And then Paula says something snarky about Nancy being, like, an internationally famous detective and she's not able to figure it out and blah, blah, blah. 
Um, what? Yeah, I know. They're all pissed at each other and like in fighting. It's pretty hilarious, honestly. But then Nancy and Bruce is like, oh, hey, wait a second. Don't we have a radio? <laughs> Can't we radio for help? And nobody thought of this before. Nobody thought of this last night when they were like trying to make a dangerous decision about who stays and who goes. No, now Nancy's like, oh, wait, shouldn't we use the safety like device that we've brought this radio? Um, So Max goes to get the radio and it's not working. Of course, it looks like someone purposefully removed the crystal from inside of it, which like today I learned or when I read this, I learned that radios used to have crystals inside of them. That's how radios used to operate. Who knew? (laughs) Um, But so that's missing. And so now it seems like they have no choice but to try to like make a treacherous climb out of the mountain or like out of the canyon. Yeah. Wonderful. Yep. Um, so Paula tells them that it will be really tough to do it, but technically it is doable for them to hike out of the canyon. Uh, supposedly once they get to the top of the canyon, they will need to get to a trail that is like five miles away or something like that. And then once they get to the trail, it's like another 14 miles or something to this ranger station. And then supposedly the ranger station, it's either currently manned or it has like a radio there, at least that they'll be able to use to call for help. So All in all, it's going to be at least a two-day hike, but they do not have enough food to last everyone two days. So they, well, first of all, they have no other option. They need to get moving pretty quickly here if they want to make this food last as long as possible. But yeah, so now they're going to have to ration their food from here on out. Um, So they start packing up all their stuff. They have to make some really difficult choices about what they're going to take with them and what they don't want to have to carry for the next couple of days. Um, And Paula comes up to Bess and is like, look, I need you to be the one to hold on to the compass. (laughs) You have to be the one to hold it. And it's going to be really, really important because if you're not like paying attention, we're going to end up going in circles and we're going to waste time and it's just not going to be good for anybody. And Bess is like not super confident about this because she admits that she's not a great navigator. She doesn't really want to be the one in charge of the compass, but... Nobody else volunteers, I guess. So this is what I have an issue with, though, is because it's like Bess was a good navigator at the beginning of this when she had Mm -hmm. that sketchy map. Yep. I know it's just that she's like nervous or whatever. Like she doesn't want to be the one responsible for it. But it's like, don't sell yourself short, Bess. You are a good navigator. You've got it. You've got this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyway, (laughs) Paula says something about having to like teach her or like needing to teach her later how to use the compass yeah. it's like i think Bess can figure it out <laughs> it's think. not that hard but anyway yeah so they managed to climb out of the canyon but it does take them about two hours to do it and also linda sprains her ankle in yep. doing so so ned bless him goes into the woods and like <laughs> finds a big like branch or something yeah. and they are able to kind of modify it a little bit to make it a crutch for her so now she is hobbling along i just have to say though linda is the true like rock star of this I whole know. thing seriously she has to do a 14 mile hike on a, on a broken ankle. ankle yeah it's not broken but twisted sure like, yeah at, anyway and like at some point like later down the line after they've walked for forever she talks about how her ankle is like swollen so bad like she mm-hmm. can't even like yeah so, can't put any weight on it. And they're like, well, too bad. You got to keep going. Well, but the thing is, is like, yeah, she does. But I'm like, her boyfriend, like, should really be offering to, like, piggyback her or something yeah. for a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Can they not build a stretcher and carry her that last yeah. mile or something? Seriously. Like, Seriously. Gosh, feel so bad for her. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> <laughs> that crutch just. Not going to help no, at all, honestly. It's, it's better than nothing. It's but a yeah, stick. it's really. Oh, gosh. It's awful. This whole situation <laughs> is so bad. But once they get to the top of the canyon, they stop for a very measly lunch. I think they each get like one piece of beef jerky mm-hmm. or something like that. Yep. Um, and Nancy checks in with Bess, who has spent the hike kind of walking closer to Paula. And so she was like, Hey, did you learn anything from talking to Paula? And no, they don't really learn anything from this, but she does notice that Max has been eyeing Paula, like giving her this like weird, suspicious looking look the whole mm-hmm. time, like almost glaring at her, glaring at her, um, uh, almost like he knows something that the rest of them don't hmm. and something about Paula has 
made him mad or suspicious in some way. Interesting. And then Paula, um, I guess they're getting up from lunch or whatever, and they're trying to decide which way to start off again. And Paula's like, okay, Bess, give me the compass, please. And Bess goes into her pocket to grab it, and it's not there. The compass is gone. And so, of course, everyone turns on Bess. Yeah. Bess, how could you? How could you be so careless? That's the one thing, ensuring our survival, and you've lost it. What is wrong with you? George You're such a loser. especially is, like, on her. And Horrible it's like, to her. Every, everybody's piling on Bess, but George is the worst. Mm-hmm. And I just cannot imagine, like... Yeah. Like, imagine being, like, the target of, like, everyone's, like, like anger. And then yeah. your cousin is, like, the worst of them. Like, who's mm-hmm. also, like, your best friend. Like, let's be real. Like, Bess and George are best friends. Yeah. So it's, like, uh, like not a single person is, like, sticking up for you. And your best friend is the one who is coming after you the worst. Not even being, like, I'm sure it was an accident or it's going to be okay. Like, not even trying to do any of that. No, nobody defends Bess at all. Nobody even gives her, like, the benefit of the doubt. She's like, oh, well, no, I put it in my pocket. It was right here. I know I had it. There's no way it could have fallen out of my pocket. Like, I wasn't even wearing the jacket. Like, I put it in my jacket pocket. I took the jacket off. I laid it on that rock. We ate lunch, and now it's not in the pocket anymore. Like, by the way, George, who knows that they've spent the entire trip being Mm -hmm. sabotaged. Yeah. Like, and and believes that Bess was careless enough to lose it, not that someone stole it from her. Yeah. Nobody even stops to think like, oh, this could be part of the sabotage that we ah! know has been happening this whole trip. <laughs> yes. Uh. So yes, nobody is giving Bess the benefit of the doubt at all in this situation. But it does seem like Paula is kind of relishing this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like she almost doesn't care that they're lost. Or right. she says something again about how Nancy can't mm-hmm. solve this. And it's like, there's what nothing to <laughs> like yeah it's not a mystery you just have bad things happen to you it's not nancy's fault she can't wave a magic wand and get us out of the situation yet whatever in fact you are the one who's responsible for this paula because you're the one who organized this trip and you didn't you know consider all the dangers and provide enough of like you know reliable equipment or whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> like so maybe we should have had more than one compass <laughs> like, maybe jeez <laughs> But then at this point, Ned is like, Nancy, I need to talk to you. One second. Let's go talk over here. And he says that he saw Paula take the compass out of Bess's pocket. Ugh. And so Nancy's like, hey, George, come here. <laughs> yeah. Come here, George. Um, hey, by the way, this is Paula's fault. Bess didn't lose the compass. Lay off and, her. <laughs> yeah. And so George does apologize to Bess, to be fair. But then they decide that, yeah. oh, Bess, can you take the ridicule for just a few mm-hmm. more minutes longer? And Bess is like, uh, I'd rather not. And they're yeah. like, do it, Bess. Take one for the team because mm-hmm. we can't blow our cover that we're mm-hmm. on to Paula. Mm-hmm. Why not? Why yeah. not put a stop to any potential like future sabotage yeah. at this point? And everyone say, hey, sit down. We know it's you, Paula. Mm-hmm. You took the compass. Why What's did going you do on? That? Start explaining. Yeah. We're not going anywhere until you explain. Mm-hmm. We decide not to do that. We're just going to continue letting everyone believe that Bess has lost the compass. This is Murder on Ice all over again, where they suspected Bess's boyfriend, Gunther, at the time mm-hmm. of being the one doing all the sabotage. And Nancy was like, oh, but we can't let him know just yet. Bess, can you like continue going out with him and making out with him and pretending like everything's fine? Mm-hmm. And Bess is like, no. And Nancy's like, sorry, you kind of have to. You have to. It's for the the mystery. (laughs) I'm sorry? (laughs) Great. But Ned tells us that he was, I guess he saw Max watching Paula. Um, And so he knows that Max also saw Paula take the compass out of Bess's pocket. So Max knows too, but he didn't say anything. Cool. So he's an asshole too. (laughs) Like, mm. for real. Okay, and it all we need to talk about this later, too, because that also doesn't make any sense. I guess, I mean, I know that Paula is his employer or whatever, mm-hmm. but, like, we are so far past, mm-hmm. you know, any kind of, like, you know, loyalty situation happening yeah. here. You are lost in the wilderness. Yeah. Your rafts have been destroyed. You know that your boss is responsible for at least this instance of sabotage, and mm-hmm. you don't say anything? You don't say anything to all these other people here like, oh, I saw Paula take it. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the? What? Yeah. So they, you know, the four of our four Drew crew members decide amongst themselves that, okay, yes, Bess is innocent. Paul is up to something here. So they turn back to the rest of the group and George is like, hey, guys, isn't Bess an idiot? Yeah. We hate her still, right? And they continue piling onto Bess just because they've got to keep up this charade now. Um, and, of course, the rest of the group is very upset. Everybody is getting really, really antsy by mm-hmm. this point. Uh, but they realize, you know what? We still have to keep going, right. so we better just get going, right? But at this point, we come up to, I guess, another cliff area. There's another creek that Paula says she recognizes this creek as being kind of near, I guess, the trailhead that they're looking for. So Paula decides that she and Max are going to climb up to the top of this cliff that they see and kind of survey the land and see if they're kind of in the right area to see if they recognize where they're at. Oh, and it's really important here to note that Paula has been wearing this very, like, mm-hmm. distinguishable red mm-hmm. jacket this whole time. Or I guess, like, red checker. I can't remember exactly what it yeah. looks like. But it's a very uh, recognizable jacket. Right. So they are – Paula and Max go up to the top of the cliff. And the rest of the group is just kind of sitting there, Resting. letting Linda yeah. rest her ankle for a f- few minutes before <laughs> they have to continue on. Poor Linda. But then they start to hear a struggle from the top of the cliff. And then they hear Paula scream, Max, no, Max, no. And then they just see Paula's limp body and that red jacket flash from the top of the cliff all the way down. Splash. <laughs> Thank Paula you for that. Paula has been pushed off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the splash. I needed that. I need that to really peak. Yes. <laughs> Uh, So this cliff was like at least a 50 foot drop down to the ravine. And so they're not able to like climb down to get to the river to look at Paula, but they do like run over to the edge and they look down and they see that red jacket like ballooning up in the Mm -hmm. water and Paula's body being like washed downstream. (laughs) (laughs) This is so intense. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They've just witnessed a murder. Yeah. Paul gets shoved off the top of the, the cliff, um, and they all determined, like, yeah, that's way too high. Like, nobody would have survived yeah. that fall, basically. Um, and the creek is rushing too fast anyway. Like, even if they could get down there, there's no way that they yeah. would be able to, like, try to get to her. So they decide, well, we have to just keep going and <laughs> just send somebody to come get her body once we're able to get rescued. Oh, my God. <laughs> so grisly. Yes. Um, and now, I'm of course, laughing. Bess is upset. I'm laughing because this is not, like, a real-life circumstance. Like, this is fiction, and it's ridiculous. Right. Like, I'm not laughing because this is funny. Like, this is not yeah. funny. This is horrible. This is horrific. <laughs> so gruesome, too. Yes. Just to, like... Uh, someone they literally were just talking to, and then, like, ah, like... Splash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm so morbid. I'm so sorry. Everybody listen. <laughs> Right. Um, and now Bess is really upset because her crush has just murdered somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> in front of everyone. Right. right. <laughs> Complicates the relationship. <laughs> well, and I guess now Nancy is like, I guess there's no reason to keep it a secret anymore. But yeah, <laughs> y'all, Paul is the one that stole a compass. Oh, my God. Um, and we're pretty sure that Max, like, knew that Paula was up to something. So that's probably why he murdered her. <laughs> Question <laughs> mark, we guess. I mean, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, And Nancy's like, okay, well, we have to talk to Max about this. Like, we have to question him. So they're all able to, like, manage to climb up to where the, I guess, fight had happened. And Max is gone. Absolutely nowhere to be found. No trace of him left anywhere. Because would you stick around after you murdered someone? Probably not. (laughs) No, because he knows that he's going to look really guilty. And so he's fled, obviously, as well now. And Mercedes is over here kind of giving Nancy a weird look, which Nancy immediately picks up on Mm -hmm. and starts thinking like, okay, well with Paula gone, maybe Mercedes knows more that she was willing to say. And if Paula's gone now, maybe she's be more comfortable Mm -hmm. saying whatever it is that she knows. So they keep hiking and they finally, finally, finally do manage to get to the trail that Paula had mentioned. The one that if they just follow it, they'll be about 10 miles or so from, or maybe it was like 15 from, the ranger station or whatever it is that they're looking for. And of course they're like at a crossroads. Like it goes left or it goes right. Yeah. 
and they don't know which is the right way because obviously I guess there's just the one station. So if they pick the wrong yeah. way, they're going to be going <laughs> in circles or walking 15 miles for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not sure which way to go, but now there's obviously <laughs> the group is getting smaller and smaller. Yes. So <laughs> they don't want to split up even more because if there is a murderer out here yeah. picking people off one by one, <laughs> They certainly don't want smaller groups, which would be easier to overtake, I guess, Mm -hmm. by Max. So they all take a vote and they decide to go uphill because most likely this ranger station is on a top of a hill where it would have a better lookout point. So it makes sense to them that probably they should take the one that goes up because hopefully they'll get to the tower from there. But then as they're going down the trail, Nancy cannot shake the feeling that somebody is watching her (laughs) and she even tells ned she's like i feel like there's eyes on me and he's like you know what i feel it too like something just doesn't feel right i don't know if there's like a bear stalking us in the woods or what's going on but like somebody's in those woods and i just can't see them but then they do hear a noise like a, a branch breaks or something and a large boulder starts to roll down the hill, barreling straight towards them. Oh, Indiana Jones style. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but so Ned ends up like rescuing Nancy. He like, you know, jumps and like pushes her out of the way or something. And Nancy is so turned on by it. Like she is oh my like gosh. so like, oh my God, Ned, save me. Oh, Ned. So hunky. like, <laughs> just, it's the <laughs> most put on like situation. It's hilarious. Anyway. Um, afterwards, she sees, like, a shadow in the trees, and so she wonders if, like, that's Max in the trees, and if he's pushed this boulder down to try to, I guess, flatten them with it <laughs> or something. Um, and they're like, oh, maybe Max is trying to, like, yeah, pick us off all of one by one, kill us before we can make it out of the woods and report him to the police for Paul's murder, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. It's just like, oh, golly. So that evening, um, they have to they stop and make camp, and they're preparing the last little bit of their rations, and Nancy tries to get more information out of Mercedes, particularly, like, about Paula's family, but Mercedes is still really jumpy and defensive and won't tell her anything, really, but she does say there's no point in digging up the past, which kind you of mean implies... mean the murder from yesterday? <laughs> yeah, <so> that. <laughs> that but it also implies that there is more to paula's past that she's not Mm -hmm. willing to talk about so interesting um ned and nancy also tell everyone about their close encounter with the boulder um and their concern that max is like stalking them in the woods so they all decide to take shifts throughout the night so that someone is always staying up on lookout in case max decides to come and murder them all in their sleep so um, they do that. Um, and then in the morning, uh, Nancy wakes up before everyone else, and Ralph, who was on lookout, has dozed off, which, way to go, Ralph. But Nancy, like, she, like, pulls on her blanket because she's cold, and, and she realizes that, like, it's, like, stuck on something, or, like, it's, like, there's something heavy on her blanket. And she looks down, and there is a rattlesnake coiled Mm-mm. at the bottom of her blanket. Nope. Ned ends up rescuing her again. Maybe that should have been one of our three words. It should have been <laughs> Ned's rescue attempts. Because right. <laughs> holy crap. And he kills the snake with a rock. He picks up a rock and smashes the snake's, like, brains out, like, on this blanket, which, ew, I was using that. And two, like, oh, like, oh, why? Like, I mean, I know it's a rattlesnake and I know, like, but can't you just, like, yeet it into the woods or something? Right. Like, spin it around, like. I don't know. <laughs> like a lasso? <laughs> Just toss it. Oh. Um, well, anyway. no, this is what gets Nancy going. So we got it. <laughs> where? Okay. Where the heck is Todd right now? Todd with, with his knife? knife? Right. Where's Todd? Like, come on, Todd. The one thing you've been like talking about this whole trip could have helped us all. But no, Ned has to smash it with a rock, which Ugh. like talk about dangerous. Like, what have you missed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just broke Nancy's foot. Now we have two broken ankles. <laughs> and the mad rattlesnake is going to bite someone. Like, anyway. Um, um, uh, at this point, you know, the snake's dead. They're all looking really rough. I'm sure Nancy is covered with rattlesnake blood. Yum. But they soldier on. Because they have to. They really don't have any other choices. Like, literally is, like, the Donner Party. Like, they are, like... I know. 
they are they have to keep going because otherwise they're gonna die or max is gonna come and murder them like there's no other option <laughs> they're almost out of water as yes! well at this point like, like... these are bad <laughs> um also nancy that's i just think this is the funniest part nancy has the blister on her heel <laughs> she's upset about <laughs> So she has to like stop and sit and like take off her shoe and look at her blister. <laughs> well, and I, she even says she's like, I need to catch up to one of the guys. I don't remember which one. It doesn't matter. But he has the first aid kit in right. his pack. She needs and like a band aid. Like, <laughs> she's like, it's getting to the point that I f- I think it might be infected. Maybe I should ask him for a band aid. It's like you didn't think of that when the blister started to rub. Like you had band aids and chose not to prevent the blister yeah. from getting worse, and mm-hmm. now it's infected. Right? Come on, Nancy. Yeah. Come on. Um. But so she stops. She takes off her shoes. She looks at her open blister and is like, "Yep, that's infected." <laughs> um. And but then while she's sitting here, everybody else is like, you know, gone by. I guess enough. And suddenly she hears a rustling behind her. And it is Max. He, like, comes out of the woods, but he's, like, limping because, I guess, he's, like, been injured or something. And so, God, this is so, like, horror movie-esque. So she gets up and starts to, like, try to, like, run away from him. But she ends up tripping over a tree root. And Max is carrying, like, a club with him. And so he, like, comes up to her and is like, you can't get away. I won't let you. And he hits her over the head with the club. And she blacks out. So when she wakes up, she's lying on the ground um, with her hands tied behind her back because, oh yeah, Max has tied her hands behind her back. And Max is just like sitting a few feet away from her, like whittling a spear, but like his back is to her. So she is able to like sneakily cut her bindings away with like a sharp rock that's behind her. But then when Max realizes she's awake, he says, I didn't mean to hit you so hard. I just wanted to talk. Which... That's the behavior of an innocent man. <laughs> Clubs you over the head, ties you up, like... sitting there whittling a spear, <laughs> like all menacingly while you're yes. trying to wake up. Like, that's wild. Also, like, imagine, like, I wanted to talk, so I hit you over the head. Like, but like, okay. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I've never started a conversation by hitting someone over the head. I just have to say, <laughs> that's never happened. <laughs> This um, is the only thing I don't get. Like, why we have to go to this extreme. No. no um, but so Nancy is like, she's prepared for this because she realized that at some point he was going to realize she was awake. So she's kind of like feigning being asleep. But so when he comes over and says that, she's ready and she jumps up and hits him over the head with a rock. <laughs> All right, let's go, Nancy. Um, and then after that, she runs off terrified. And when she stops, she realizes that she has no idea where she is, which obviously you got knocked unconscious and dragged somewhere into the woods. Like, how would you know where you are? Mm -hmm. Um, But luckily she hears Ned, Bess, and George calling for her. So she's able to like meet up with them. Um, And she explains what happened and says that like, oh, actually now I think I was maybe a little too hasty. I wish I hadn't hit him over the head because now I like, I'm curious, like what he was going to say, which like, no, I'm sorry. No. The guy, the guy hit you over the head, tied you up, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry I hit him. Darn it. <laughs> no, Nancy. Jeez. Anyway, they, she even, like, wants to, like, try to, like, track him down and, like, go back. Especially now that she has, like, other people with her, but she ran and she can't remember where she came from and they can't find him. So, oh, well. They rejoin the others. And they tell them about Nancy's abduction. Um, And so obviously everyone is terrified too, but they have to keep going because again, no other choice here. And so they end up finding this, like it's not really a ranger station. It's more of like a fire tower. Um, Mm. So it's not currently manned, right? Because fire towers aren't manned all the time. Although it's like summertime, which is like when they should be manned usually. You would think. So... I don't, this logic doesn't really play out to me, but I think there probably are a lot of unmanned fire towers out there. Um, so maybe it's not, I don't know. I think they do say that this is like an old, like abandoned mm, road okay. that maybe it was like they've built a newer one and don't right. use this one anymore kind of thing. 
But why would it still be like f- functional mm-hmm. with the radio and mm-hmm. everything in it? If not, that's the does thing. not matter. That's the but thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so they decide, okay, well, we're going to climb up it to see if there is a working radio in it. But then like, there's like a, sh- a shed, like off to the side of it or something. And like right by it, they spot movement. And it is Max again, coming out of the woods with his club. <laughs> So Max comes out and he says, no, 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 it's fine. I just want to talk to Nancy. I'm sorry about hitting you over the head. And Ned's like, not on your life. (laughs) Yeah. But he's got this club still and he's like holding it up. Like he's about to attack them with it. And he's refusing to put it down. So like, bro, are you violent or not? What's going on here? But Mike and Todd are also there like threatening him. Right. Because of course they know what's happened yesterday And they end up jumping him and almost beating him, like, half to death. Or, like, almost beating him to death. But Ned jumps in and, like, stops them from actually killing him. Yeah, no, because, like, Todd, like, literally, like, starts, like, with his knife and is, Mm -hmm. like, let's kill him. Like. Yeah. What? What? Hold on. Let's, let's, can we, let's find this really quick. Because it is literally horrifying. Okay, it's Max. He's coming to kill him. Let's get him, Todd shouted. Uh, watch out, Mike cautioned. He's got a club. That's okay, Todd said. His eyes narrowed to slits. We can handle that. And then Ned's like, wait, I think he just wants to talk. Um, but Todd and Mike ignored Ned and advanced threateningly toward Max. Stay back, he rasped when Todd moved closer. For instant, distracted by Nancy's voice and by his own coughing, Max lowered the stick. Mike and Todd rushed him. Mike tackled him around the knees, bringing him down, and Todd tried to pin his arms behind his back. Max fought back with the strength of a madman, and the three rolled on the dusty ground in a silent, violent tangle. But after a moment, the two were too much for Max, and Todd managed to get astride him. He put his hands around Max's neck, trying to throttle him. Mm. Also, so then Ned jumps in with the skill that made him Emerson star quarterback, which LOL. He grabbed Mike by the collar and tossed him several feet away. But as he reached for Todd, Todd jumped up and picked up the club Max had dropped. Now I've got you. You're not going to get away with killing Paula. He poised to strike the spike glinting viciously at the end of the stick. Oh yeah. We didn't say he's got like a yeah, nail sticking yeah. out of his club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. And then Nancy, oh yeah, Nancy karate kicks it out of his hand. I forgot Yay! about that. <laughs> we have to have a karate kick right, at of some point. Of course, of course, it's the files. Where would we be? But yeah, they're literally trying to kill him. Oh my gosh. These people. It's crazy. Anyway, sorry, continue. So, yes, Nancy does her karate chop. Ned (laughs) intervenes the way he needs to, and they're able to stop them from literally killing Max. And he is, at this point, of course, going in and out of consciousness because that was pretty rough on him. But he starts telling Nancy he didn't kill Paula. It was the other way around. Huh. And then he says, no, 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 Paula is trying to kill you, Nancy. But then he goes completely unconscious. So they move him out of the sun a little bit and Ned and Bess sit with him while everybody else goes like up the tower to try to get to the radio or whatever. And Nancy starts telling Mike, like, you need to radio for a doctor as well for the rescue because we need a doctor like now or this guy might not make it. Mm -hmm. And then she starts kind of going over in her mind, like what Max just said, like it was the other way around. What does that mean? If he didn't try to kill Paula, Maybe that means Paula tried to kill him. Yes, thank you, Nancy. You've taught us what opposite (laughs) means. Awesome. But then at this exact moment, she sees another figure dashing towards the stairs. And it's Paula. (laughs) Paula's alive. She's not dead. (laughs) And she confirms to Nancy that, yes, she has been trying to kill her this whole time. Actually, she says, don't you remember this guy's name? And honestly, I don't even remember the guy's name at this point. And (laughs) Nancy's like, no, it it sounds like kind of familiar, but I don't know who that is. And Paula goes, well, it's my father and you're the one that put him away for embezzling. And (laughs) it's all your fault that he went to jail and he died in jail. And it's all because of you. No, he didn't didn't die in jail. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. (laughs) He snuck out and then died in these woods like trying to like get home or something yeah i don't know it's unclear she doesn't specify trying to disappear or something ends up dying in these woods so she went out of her way to set up everything she fakes the competition she faked all the winners she invites george because she knows that george is the sporting person in the friend group and would end up inviting nancy and convincing nancy to come out here all of this 
to enact her revenge. She moved the barricade <laughs> in the woods on the very first day. She's the one that took the stake out of the ground and made Nancy get washed away by the stream. She's, of course, the one that caused the boat to get stabbed and ripped to ribbons yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Everything except for the raft capsizing on, I think it was the first or the second day, right? When the yeah. first raft capsizes and then they all got stranded after that point. That genuinely was an accident <laughs> on Max's part, but everything else was all Paula orchestrating mm -hmm. everything. And she ends up lunging at Nancy and they get into a physical fight. And Nancy ends up kicking Paula into the railing because they're like on the staircase yeah. basically going up the tower at this point and paula then actually falls off the edge to her death and <gasps> dies because nancy has like horse kicked her right. off this railing yeah and so of course they all like run over to the railing and like do look down to make sure paula's dead and it's just <clears> something like really gruesome from like the way that nancy that paula was like splayed out on yes. the ground nancy knew she had to be dead well Ugh. i think i think bess even runs over to her and like checks her pulse and was like yeah mm -hmm. she's dead like uh, uh. nancy just killed someone this needs, this is what we need to put at the beginning of <laughs> this episode nancy kills someone in this book you guys mm -hmm. oh my gosh I mean, oh it's self-defense, but Nancy killed someone. Yeah. Nancy killed someone. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. That's what you're in for, regular Drews, if you read this book. Yes. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Murder. I'm not murdering someone. She killed someone. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Has that ever happened before? Mm. Maybe, I mean, maybe in the files. I'm sure it happens later in the files again. But I'm wondering if I'm it's sure happened it in the files up to this point. Or if this is the first canonic instance of Nancy being responsible for someone else's death. Like, so directly. You yeah. know what I mean? There's definitely something in the CW show that happens. And then Nancy has, like, a lot of guilt over sure. it. And then something else happens. You find out it but wasn't real. It was actually just a dream, basically. Prior to but 1986. <laughs> Right. Is this the, the first time Nancy has killed someone? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, obviously CW shows way, way, way after right, this. But right. yeah. Mm, okay. Anyway. Sorry, continue. So we confirm Paula is dead. Actually dead this time. And Max limps over now. And we get the full story of what actually happened on that cliffside. Um, so he tells them it was actually Paula who pushed him over the rocks um, actually he had been suspecting her already for like a day or so at the point that this had happened. And when they get up to the cliffside, he decided that that was the moment to confront her, I guess. And they thought that it was Paula falling over the cliff because Paula actually, when they got up there had like insisted that Max borrow her jacket. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why it was her yeah. red jacket that they saw going over the cliff. Um, it was just him wearing it, but he says that actually it was a good thing that she had insisted on him wearing the jacket because it was such a right. big, like puffy, like, I guess just massive jacket mm -hmm. that it's like actually because of that, that he survived the fall because yeah. the jacket like almost made like a little raft in yeah. the water that he was able to like survive because of that. Yeah. Um, still, honestly, from like the fall that we saw and then like the falling in the river at the speed that he did. <laughs> It's a miracle. He he should not have survived nope. that. Like, as they said, nobody would have survived that fall. But he did somehow. He did break bones. That's why he's been, like, limping. I don't know if his leg right. is broken, but I think he has, like, broken mm -hmm. ribs or something. Like, he's not okay. <laughs> well, he certainly has broken ribs now yeah. that Todd and Mike are done with him. For Jeez. Real. This poor guy, like, got framed for Paula's faking her own death mm -hmm. and then almost gets murdered because everybody gangs up on him when also he needed help. That's why they didn't <laughs> find him on the cliff side because he was down in the creek bed dying. Also, like, consider the fact that, like, he got into this accident last year, which resulted in two people's deaths. And so he hasn't been able to get a job. And mm -hmm. so the first time he's able to get a job, this is what happens to him. She frames him for her own murder. <laughs> oh my gosh. And tried to kill him. Oof. Uh... So yes, at this point, we actually have Mercedes come over and we kind of get her side of the story. We learned that it was actually Mercedes was the one who called Nancy at the beginning to try to warn Nancy because she knew that Paula was up to something but didn't know how far Paula intended to take it. Right. She just knew that she wanted some sort of revenge, but didn't know that it was going to fully involve murder. Right. 
Uh, so Mercedes thought that, like, okay, if I could just warn Nancy somehow, maybe she will think to not come at all. Or if she does come, she'll bring a weapon. Which... Why would you think to do that? So that's, we learned that's why Mercedes was looking in Nancy's bag was because she was rummaging around checking to see whether or not Nancy had a weapon with her. (laughs) I don't know what that would have changed. Like if she had, would have then warned Nancy if like she thought that she was more vulnerable or something. Okay. Why was Mercedes, why did Mercedes come on this trip? Right. Like, I'm sorry, you know, your cousin is like out for revenge and you're like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> no, you want to get far away from that as possible, right? <laughs> well, and I think at the beginning they like not in the pretense of any of this, but just when they're talking about the contest winning or anything, Mercedes is like, "Yeah, I wasn't a contest winner. I just really wanted to come, and I asked my cousin if I could tag along, and right. she said yes." And so it's like, "Girl, is, did you genuinely just still want to go whitewater rafting, knowing that this was going to happen?" <laughs> I'm like, "Well, it's going to be fun for me, so <laughs> yeah. I don't care." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so determines Nancy did not have a weapon and then did nothing. Yeah. After that point. Yeah. And of course knew the situation with Paula's father and everything. So she knew that it was going to be a revenge thing, but then just put her hands up and was like, well, I can do nothing now because Nancy didn't bring a gun. So so. like also she knew all along too, that it was Paula who was causing all of these accidents. Like, right? Like, so. She had to have. So she was also piling on Bess when she knew Paula's (laughs) compass so we really didn't have to do the compass thing we could have just stopped and said hey Bess is innocent paula you have some explaining to do (sighs) okay so we get that explanation and then of course they are able to get into the tower make the radio and then the helicopters come to rescue them all um and then i think after the rescue we're all remarking on how terrible of a vacation that was and we're all just absolutely annoyed except for bez because she's glad that she met max and lost five pounds because of the you know having to ration their Uh, meals uh, the end why why we all almost died but Bess lost some weight out of necessity why why Net positive. Why, 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 why? <laughs> why is this the end of this book when it could have just been best being like, I told you so? Why can't we get a best I told you so moment instead right? of best just being like, oh, it's okay. No, best, stand up for yourself. Like, these people were horrible to you this whole trip. Don't be like, well, it's great because I met this guy and I lost five pounds. This is, this is best slander. Like, this is truly it best is. character assassination. I don't stand for this. I don't like this. No. <sighs> well, it's actually not quite the end because Nancy and Ned have to make out first and oh, then right. it's the end. Yeah, right. Yeah. The end, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't be a Ned and Nancy vacation unless they made out for at least 10% of the book, probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Although I did think it was hilarious. There's one point where like they're going to bed and they specify, they make sure to specify that like, oh yeah, Nancy is sleeping on the blanket with Bess and George and Ned is sleeping by himself. And it's like, yes. oh my God, do you, th- do you think that everybody thinks that if you guys snuggle up together by the fire that you're going to like bone in the middle of the night with everybody else around you? Is that what we're supposed <laughs> to think? What a romantic oh. atmosphere. They're covered in <laughs> dirt and sweat and they're starving. They haven't eaten a real meal in like a week. And yeah. Oh my gosh. Goodness. Come on now. <laughs> I do also, I, it was funny. There was one point where Nancy was like, well, this is the last time I go on a vacation because yes. like, <laughs> at least when I go and like, I know that I'm yeah. going for a mystery. It doesn't turn yeah. out this way. It's always the ones Seriously. where I'm like, I think I'm going on vacation. And then the mystery shows up. Yeah. Somehow that's always worse. And she's like, no more vacations. <laughs> We're just doing pure mysteries from now on. <laughs> oh oh my funny. gosh. Okay. So. Okay, so Paula is the daughter of a guy that Nancy previously got arrested for embezzling. And so that's why she's done all this. Is this a spoiler from an earlier Nancy Drew file? Or is this just a made up reference? Because I looked, I wanted to be like, do we need to give like a spoiler? (laughs) Like warning that this isn't just a spoiler for this book. There's a spoiler for another book. Because I I looked, and so the only ones before this, this is number six. So it's Secrets Mm -hmm. Can Kill. So it's not that one. Right. Um, Deadly Intent, which, did we read Deadly Intent? I don't think so. No, no, that's the only one I think it could be. Because other than that, it's Smile and Say Murder, which we did read, and that's the newspaper mm-hmm. one. It's not that. 
um, Hit and Run Holiday, which we haven't run read, but it's like it doesn't take place in New York, and um, she specifically says that it's a case that Nancy worked on in New York. But Deadly Intent, which is number two, does take place in New York. And I tried to flip through it and Google some things, but I could not find a reference to that specific character. Yeah. So I don't know. I was wondering this as well, because I feel like that was the only real, not plot hole, but letdown for me when it mm-hmm. came to the big reveal at the end. Right. Is that we needed the the father to be somebody recognizable. Yes. So it's like, oh, yeah, that's how we know. Like, that's mm-hmm. what made it feel Ransom of the Seven Shipsy yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, that's what I was hoping is I was hoping she's someone in disguise. I hope she's wearing, like, prosthetics. Right. <laughs> Something like that, or the yeah. the villain is or the father. Her father would have been somebody a little bit more recognizable to us. And I, because at the beginning we do the normal thing that we always do, where it's like, yeah, Nancy's the seasoned detective. Let mm-hmm. me mention a few previous book titles, because it's right. just the formula for Simon and Schuster. They're going to plug their previous stories, but also right. you're giving a little bit of context. So we do that for like two or three other books. And I was like wondering, like, why didn't we, if it is a previous Mm -hmm. file, why didn't we make more of an effort to pull that out and like specifically explain, oh, that villain, so-and-so, he went to prison and blah, blah, blah. And Mm -hmm. don't we remember so that we could call back to it later on. But we don't do that. They specifically bring up, like Nancy talks about her previous cases. That was a perfect moment to be like, oh, there was this one case. Or like Ned's like, tell us about the one where you caught the embezzler in New York. Or right. It could have just been like a throwaway like that or something. And then Paula could get really angry or something. That yeah. would have been perfect. But we, perfect. I mean, we dedicate that time to like Ned's cheating in the past. It's like you had the <laughs> opportunity to say something about the previous mm-hmm. mystery. So is that what it is? It's, is it just a guy from a previous mystery or did we make up a previous villain just so that I we can have this moment? Up. Which is annoying. I want I some know. sort of reference to him previously because otherwise you can't guess. It's not fair to the reader. Right. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen because I haven't been getting all the information. And I wish, and this is, this is a spoiler for um, Stay Tuned for Danger, but I guess that's after this one. Dang. That's number 17, yeah. Dang. I was going to say, I wish she's like Dwayne Powers' his niece or something. Right. Um, <laughs> but let's see who, who else could it be. I mean, there is, yeah, I don't think, yeah. Because secrets can kill, obviously, it's the drug dealer. So, like, she could, I mean, she could have been the drug dealer's sister or something. Mm-hmm. Like, or Mitch child, is my brother. Like, yeah. You did this to him. Yeah. yeah. That would have been great. That would have been hilarious. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So that's how we're going to improve Ransom of the Seven Ships when we <laughs> finally get the remastered. We're going to remove the blackface. And we're also just going to add it. It was like, a, hey, Nancy, you won this vacation. But then so did all of these other people. And yes. you're all now in this situation together. Mm-hmm. And then we have an actual reason to put other characters into it. Because mm-hmm. why would you have a mystery with one suspect? And then be like, oh. <gasps> The villain is the one <laughs> suspect. Who would have guessed? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, then also, and I mean, like, I know they don't want to do, in a in a PC game, they don't want to do too many animated characters, right? Because it's a lot right. um, of course. to do. But we need but more then, than one. But you could, ha- you could literally have three people. You could have one and then one couple. And then you can have, like, another couple that, like, didn't make it for some reason. Like, right. they won the contest. Yeah. And their phone contacts. Like, how many times do we do that in an easy Drew game? Like, always it's like right. oh these people who are like who should have been here but they're not so we can only call them yeah. like easy so easy. easy yeah see that's what i'm saying this book <laughs> is what ransom of the seven ships wanted I to can be see it you know i can of see like it. the we have this previous villain that maybe wasn't even actually a previous villain in the right. files but just that whole idea that a previous villain is coming back to enact revenge on nancy or the daughter of a previous villain whatever Mm-hmm. This is just yeah. a better way to do that. I don't know. I agree. I'm Not totally that this agree. was stellar in and of itself, but it's better <laughs> than, than Ransom of the Seven Ships and how that was accomplished. Can we talk about, though, like how freaking psychopathic Paula is? Like, oh my gosh. Is this? <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I'm going through it in my mind and I'm like thinking about how many situations she set up in an mm-hmm. attempt to kill Nancy. And, like, how much opportunity, like, she actually had. But, like, she never, like, fully, like, commits. Like, she's like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, set up this situation where they'll drive up a cliff. Oh, they didn't. But now I get to torment them in the wilderness. And she Mm -hmm. even says at the end she's glad 
that like it didn't happen that she didn't die from any of the previous accidents because now Polly gets to see her die. Mm-hmm. So what? <laughs> Sorry. Also, Todd is totally a psychopath too. Oh yeah. And what happened to Sammy? Did because I feel like she just right? disappeared. We never talked to her, talk about her after the bear situation. I don't. Right? We don't even mention her in passing. We don't mention her as being part of any group. She just disappears. So I'm like, did Sammy go rogue and is like in the wilderness somewhere? We just all forgot about her because we wanted to. Like, how many psychopaths well. are in this story? How many? How many like <laughs> affected people oh are here gosh. in this wilderness with us? They're all insane. They're all postal. <laughs> and I where think the does term she find? Here. <laughs> where where did Paula find all these other quote unquote contest winners? Because obviously there was no contest. She right. fabricated this entire fake company just to get to Nancy, and then she Nancy does um, at some point at the beginning remark that it's weird that all the other contest winners are local. local like her yeah. group is the only one that had to fly in. So she's found all these like other random people from the Montana area to, which obviously it's just easier for her to do that Mm -hmm. to populate the the rest of the trip so that it looks normal for Nancy. But then it's all expenses paid. So she pays for their flights. She pays for their rental car. She (laughs) pays for their motel room, pays for all this like equipment for the actual rafting trip. She pays all these other people to come in. (laughs) And then even says later, like, I wouldn't have cared if I had to murder everyone on this trip just so long as you died as well, Nancy. Right. So she was willing to. Mm -hmm. Including her cousin. Including her cousin. She was willing to murder everyone. Spent all this money on this trip just. To have Nancy die in some sort of weird accident? Like, so much effort went into this. Yes. And also, it was ultimately unsuccessful. Like, Mm -hmm. so unsuccessful that not only did Nancy never even get injured, Paula died as a result of all of her machinations. Yeah. All that Nancy gets (laughs) is an infected blister, and that's just her fault for not getting a Band-Aid sooner. Yes, or wearing better shoes or something. Right. Like, yes. All of that, oh. just on the hopes that Nancy would trip up and fall for something at some point. Mm-hmm. Girl, mm-hmm. this was so elaborate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, like, did you think that you were going to get away with it? I'm trying to think how this plays out. Car accident? Okay. I can see her getting away with that one. Nancy drowning, I guess I could see her getting away with that one. But, like, mm-hmm. once you're, like, lost in the wilderness together, I feel like at that point, it's like, what? It, what is, what's your play? Like, what's going to mm-hmm. happen here? Because what she does is she kills Max or tries to kill Max. And then they lose the, co- or they lose the compass first. Or they lose the compass mm-hmm. first. So you just want to get them lost in the woods. Unless, I mean, unless you all starve. Like, which... You want to starve too, Paula? You're because, choosing that for yourself? Like, because that's the only, like, outcome, right? hmm Or, like, dive exposure or something. Right. Dehydration, that kind of stuff. Or everybody turns on each other and starts killing each other. Maybe she's banking but, like, on that. Like, maybe, geez. but, like, yeah, I guess maybe she invited Todd with his knife for <laughs> But, like, how are you planning to play this off and, one, get out alive yourself and, two, not be suspected for it? You are so liable for that. If you lead a, <laughs> this expedition, like, if your company sets up this expedition yeah. and you get everyone lost and dies of exposure or a bear attack or whatever, mm-hmm. you think you're not going to be held liable for that if you somehow survive, too? Seriously. Well, and also we have to talk about, too, the fact that she made up this company. This is not even a real company, Mm -hmm. I don't think. I mean, or if it is, it's really new or something. But, Mm -hmm. like, like, so. No, she made up this whole company just for this. So, like, if a single person made it out of this alive, you are civilly liable for every single thing that happened. The psychological trauma alone. Uh Uh-huh. Like. (laughs) Wild. Wild. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything else I have to say. <laughs> so far-fetched. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, we could talk a little bit more about how awful they are to Bess in this, but I don't want to. Yeah. It's really sad. I think we said it already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, the, you know, the beginning where, like, they're talking about the boy stuff and her being timid and I don't know. And then there's also, again, some fat shaming stuff where, or Mm -hmm. diet culture stuff where Bess isn't, they're going to get ice cream at the beginning to, like, talk about the threatening call Nancy got and... Bess isn't eating ice cream. She's drinking a diet drink because mm-hmm. I guess she doesn't love to eat ice cream because she's. Wasn't there diet. something that she said in here, like self something self detrimental that Bess said? I'm sure. I mean, the compass thing is what stands out to me, but we talked about that. Oh, oh, this was it. This is where Bess is. Again, like, trying yeah. to talk everyone out of this. And it's like, guys, what if we went to the beach instead? Or what if we just, like, went to Fort Lauderdale and went shopping? And George goes, shopping? Right. All you ever want to do is go shopping, Bess Marvin. Don't you have a larger purpose in life? Right. Bess looked at George calmly. Of course I do, she said with a twinkle in her eye. Going out with a good-looking boy or eating. Okay, Bess, I, I see that <sighs> yes. you're trying to be – like, she's trying to mm-hmm. – Joke. Right. Yeah, she's joking. She's, she's being a, a little bit sarcastic, but yeah. also just Glib. like playing off the like, "Hey, you always joke about this with me." Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, yeah, also, like, I do I'm have sorry. other things. What is wrong with any of those things? What mm-hmm. is wrong with any of those things? Almost, I can't imagine anyone doesn't like buying themselves a little treat. Who doesn't sure. like buying themselves a little treat? Who That's doesn't fine. like you know, uh, you know, have romantic attention? Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like good food? I'm sorry, where, at what planet am I on? Like, (laughs) Bess is the most relatable character. The most, the most relatable one. And who would not choose that over going and doing this expedition (laughs) that she's trying to warn them off of? She's like, we've already got a threatening call. We don't need all this drama. I don't want to go camping in the wilderness in Montana. Run out of all our food and then have to cannibalize each other. Like, I don't want to do that. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Bess and they're is giving right. her a hard time. Bess is so right. The number right. of times where we could have just listened to her. Even <laughs> when they're like at the barricade <laughs> thing. They've just left the airport. They're like yes. driving. Or not left the airport. Left the, the mm-hmm. hotel the next show. to the airport. It's early the next morning. They almost drive off the road, off a mm-hmm. cliff. And Bess is like, listen, guys. Nobody is going to fault us if we just turn around right now. We go home. We maybe go to a different destination. We just do anything but this. And they all just like decide, no, it's best if we carry on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we still want to blame Bess for the situation that we get ourselves into. Yeah. She says, well, maybe you're right, Bess said, looking pale and shaken. But I don't know. Between this and your phone call, Nancy, the whole thing looks really suspicious. In fact, Bess said, hopefully, maybe we ought to reconsider. Haven't we already had enough excitement for one trip? Best heaved a sigh of resignation. If George is staying, I guess I will too. Mm -hmm. Because she's too good of a friend, too good of a cousin to let George walk into any danger. And then George later, when she knows that they have been targeted this whole trip, Mm -hmm. berates Bess for being careless and stupid and an idiot for not wearing her life jacket, for for losing the compass. Like, Bess is such a good friend. Mm Mm-hmm. They don't deserve her. <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I've got for yeah. that one. Yeah, me too. Flashlight mm-hmm. score? Oh, gosh. Like you said, it is a fun read. It's mm-hmm. so exciting. I've read it in almost one sitting. Like, there's some enjoyableness to reading it. Yeah. But it is, is it the best mystery? Of course no. not. Yeah. It's hard. 3.75, I think. That's exactly where I was landing. Too. Oh, really? I was okay. thinking in my head like 3.5, like somewhere in between three and four. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, it's enjoyable. It's not really a mystery though, but it, but it's also like exactly kind of what I expect of mm-hmm. a um, Nancy Drew file. Yeah. And so for that, it's definitely at least a three. So yeah, but but a little bit better because yeah, exciting, interesting, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. So 3.5, yeah. 3.75, I think it's right on the money. Perfect. Um, but next up, regular Drews. We are so excited because the air date for our next episode is going to be the 22nd of November. So we will be right around Thanksgiving time. Yes. Um, and because of that, we have a very special Nancy Drew file lined up. And that is number 77, Danger on Parade. Because yes. will you believe that this happens at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? <laughs> 
perfect. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I think I don't think they call it Macy's. I think they call it Mitchell's because they can't okay. say Macy's. Maybe at least according to the back, it says yeah, Mitchell's department store star said at Thanksgiving Day Parade. That's very interesting because I do remember they mention Neiman Marcus in this one when Bess is talking mm-hmm. about shopping. They say something to the effect of like, oh, there's not going to be a Neiman Marcus on the water, so Bess doesn't want right. to go. That's weird that we could use that store name but not Macy's for this one. Well, I think it's probably akin to, you remember in the pilot of the Sarah Shahi one we uh, mm-hmm. episode we watched, they couldn't say NYU. Um, oh, of course. Be- yeah, they came up with some it was other like- random name. And our theory for that was because it was associated with student drug use. So I'm guessing because there's probably shady stuff going on behind the scenes of this parade that they can't assignate that to Macy's because then otherwise Macy's would be like, why are you bad mouthing us? (laughs) This is Nancy Drew file, Simon and Schuster. That's very fair. Yeah, because this is just a mention of Neiman Marcus. It's not like the plot is surrounding Mm -hmm. sabotage at Neiman Marcus or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know if Aunt Eloise is in this or not, but it obviously (gasps) takes place in New York, and at the very beginning, like the, um, you know how they have like in the files, they're like, the case, the contact, like, you know, Mm -hmm. they do all that stuff to kind of like wet your whistle a little bit for the book. Um, One of our contact is Aunt Eloise's friend. Oh, okay. So she is at least mentioned, Um, and honestly, I think outside of Bess, and Eloise is probably, like, my favorite Nancy Drew character. Um, oh, I love her. I love her so much. So I'm very, very excited. I hope beyond hope that she's in it. I've never read it before. But mm-hmm. it should be a really festive Thanksgiving read. So I'm excited. Me too. Yes. So join us then. Yeah. We will see you then, regular Drews. Thank you for listening to Regular Nancy Drew. Email us at regularnancydrew at gmail.com. If you like this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at regularnancydrew and Twitter at regularnd. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons at the $3 level vote on upcoming episode topics and get exclusive access to our Scoop Sesh series. And all patrons receive early access to each episode as well as weekly bonus content. And to all you regular Drews out there, Thanks for listening. listening.